Second only to largemouth bass, panfish are America's favorite fish. That's not too big of a surprise. They provide lots of action and some pretty great table fare. Plus, no matter where you live, chances are you're not too far from waters with these scrappy buggers just willing to play. For a lot of us, sunfish and crappies started our lifelong affair with the sport. It's fishing at its most basic and fun. An inexpensive rod and reel paired with a hook, line, and sinker, a bobber, maybe a little live bait, or a soft plastic morsel. That's really all you need for a great day on the water. But there's also a growing legion of anglers whose love for giant panfish borders on obsession. Unicorn hunters who spend countless hours hunting trophy panfish. 10 inch plus bull gills. Hubcap sized crappies that run well past the foot long mark. It's still about fun, but in the form of setting a new personal best snapping a quick photo of the monster for social media, then releasing it to swim another day. Yes, we've seen the positive effects of selective harvest on many waters. How releasing big panfish does a wonder of good for increasing the quality of fishing for all. On today's Edge, Jeremy Smith and Matt Parker go on the prowl for big gills and crappies on a Midwestern natural lake. Early season fish in transition from deep to shallow. I love fishing for these things, and when these are the bonus, that is so awesome, man, oh man. I, I just can't tell you enough, whoa, that this style, the old spinnerbait, how effective it is. This is overlooked. I'm guessing a lot of people probably have some of these that are rusty hanging in their tackle box. Try this stuff, man. It works for bass in the spring. Awesome. It's one of the best bass baits there is, but it also works so good for panfish. Sweet, sweet crappie. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There's one, there's one, Matthew. I'm gonna tail this down here. Feels like a scrappy, I think it's a scrappy little bluegill if I were to guess. It's feeling think, like that. I think I got a visual. I think you got a it, nice scrappy bluegill. I sure do. Man, beautiful fish. fish, huh? Look at that guy. That's what we came <laughs> That's for. That's what right? we came for. Big bluegills like this are certainly not everywhere, but they are a fish. That I would say most people that got into fishing first fell in love with. It's the introduction to most people's pan or fishing careers is, is bluegills like this. And there's so much that's going on today with bluegills in terms of technology, how to catch them, and also some of the harvest and science elements that are associated with it. So today we're going to look at how to catch some of these great bluegills, some techniques for it, but also some of the science and some of the attitudes people have about pan fishing today. Nice fish. Yeah, as Jeremy alluded to earlier, pan fishing is definitely where I cut my teeth fishing. I have super good memories of being with my dad and brother and mom fishing a little uh, channel off a big lake in Brainerd, you know, just parking the truck and walking in with our sticks and throwing some corks out and learning how to cast and catching a lot of bluegills. It's just those memories have stuck with me and now with my young kids, I can't wait to start instilling some of those memories into my kids. You know, when I started pan fishing, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, the whole deal with pan fish was to go out and catch a limit of pan fish. And you know, it wasn't that long ago, 30 years ago, you could catch a lot of big bluegills. I remember going out with my grandpa and then we used to go to a resort in Park Rapids and we would catch huge bluegills. And in my lifetime, you've seen so many lakes that used to have those giants go to lakes that are just full of those little tiny, you know, silver dollar sunfish anymore. So there's been a real change in the, you know, the size structure of our panfish in the state of Minnesota. But, re but what's happening now is we're actually starting to realize the consequences of what we did so many years ago. And, you know, Muskie's Inc., I fish a lot of muskies, has been a really great example of a, an organization that's 
promoted the catch and release, and now we're starting to see that same attitude with panfish. Selective harvest of the moderate sized fish and letting those really big bluegills go because people my age and older remember what it used to be like to go catch big bluegills, and today, I believe it's actually harder to go catch one pound bluegills than it is 50 inch muskies. There we go. What you got? I'm not 100% sure, Jerry Bear, but it's really fun fighting it on this big long rod. It's a crop dog. Nice crappie? No, it's just an average good cutting size crappie. If we were here to eat fish, this would be the one that I would want to bring to my dinner table. You know, we're sitting here just a couple days away from June and I think a lot of a misconception is that fish will go and get ready to do their spawn based on the time on the calendar, but you know, we've had a we've had about 6 days here where it's rained and the water temperature just doesn't ha hasn't had an opportunity to climb and these fish are still staged outside of where they're going to spawn. So, you know, it's it's not about what the date says on the calendar, it's about what mother nature has been giving us. There we go. Big bluegill. Is it a big bluegill? Yep. Nice. Big bluegill. I love just the circles they run. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that is a sweet fish. This is my spot. Right here. My thinking spot. My fishing spot. My spot, not yours. This is where I go. For release. And for catch and release. Where no one can find me. And fish can't hide from me. This is my spot. And I ain't going nowhere. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. This is our livelihood. Our craft literally comes down to the nuts and bolts. We depend on quality, availability, and affordability to keep our businesses running so that we can keep your homes running, living rooms bright, and getting the tough jobs done. You can't duplicate the kind of care and quality that you get from Mills Fleet Farm. We are here for you, and Mills Fleet Farm is here for us. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. I love just the circles they run. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that is a sweet fish. Come to me, Papa. Look at how wide that is. Japers, that's a donkey. Huh? It's as big as my hand. Just a big pie plate. When they say pie plate, pie, pie plate bluegills, this is definitely what they're talking about, huh? A few years ago, Jeremy, these are definitely the fish that were going in the fry pan, but these are the ones that just, these are the fish that keep the fishery alive. If you want to get a lake that you can consistently, you know, have an opportunity to catch these 10 plus inch bluegills, they got to go back in the water. Some of the major advancements we've had in fishing, not only for panfish, but everything, is of course trolling motor and boat control technology. And what we're doing right now is we've got kind of a stout south wind. It's a relatively sharp break with some cabbage and bulrushes up here, but rather than tailing down, I can't, the tailing can't reach, I'd be too far up into the rushes, so I'm spot locked. But to cover this, rather than having to pay attention to the trolling motor, 
On this little micro remote I've got for the Altera, I simply push the over button and it's just going to scoot the boat to a spot lock position five feet this way. So what we can do is we can really methodically work through this whole area. We can make pinpoint casts through these weed lines and fish at ultra slow and with panfish, slow is often the key to catching them. So as we're jogging down this shoreline, I have this 11 foot St. Croix rod paired with this Daiwa. You throw that nano braid, which I played with a lot of different lines over my years of pan fishing, which I've been doing since I was a little kid. And this nano braid is just a superior product. I mean, those bulrushes, the edge of those bulrushes is a good 30 yards away. With this 11 foot rod, I got a little 30 second ounce jig and I can easily put it right on the edge of that bulrush. So this long rod just being able to whip those little baits. And then the other thing that's really fun about this long rod is once it gets a little tighter to the boat, it gives me opportunities to play with the bait and really be precise with my depth control as I get it closer to the boat where the fish aren't gonna be spooked because I'm far enough away from the edge of the boat. So it's a fun little deal. You know, Matt's fishing with the panfish specific combo and I've got, this is a rod that I use for so much stuff. This is a seven foot medium light fast. I use it for walleye fishing, smallmouth fishing, pan fishing and cover. But then, you know, the thing about these Daiwa reels, it is truly amazing whether it's, you know, an RG or a Revros like Matt's got there or something high end like this Levias, is you don't get wind knots. If you fished light braid and wind, you know that all the time you're battling with wind knots. You get the line coming off the spool weird, it gets wrapped up. The line management system on these reels is truly superior to anything else I've used. It's no joke, it is the real deal. You're spending a lot more time fishing, a lot less time picking. There's one. Not hey, sure buddy. the size, but it's a tugger. Oh, they are little tornadoes. Oh yeah, nice one. Oh, look at that, huh? Just another tank. Man, those are awesome fish when you can barely get your hand around those things. Those are those are the sweet ones. Look at the ear on that thing. Oh, spectacular fish. Now I want to share with you a little bit about our presentation. See, dude? Now I want to share a little bit with you about our presentation. So many times when you see pan fishermen, they're fishing with corks. And it's a great way to catch fish, no doubt. But what Matt and I are doing today is we're covering water. This lake is just rim. The whole thing is nice bulrush, lily pads on the shore. There's cut banks. It's, the whole thing is cabbage. So really finding an area that's going to hold most of the pan fish isn't like a real easy deal to do. So you got to cover water. And you'd be surprised on how many pan fish are willing to bite something like this. This is a little just a little spinner, just like the old traditional beetle spin, but this is a VMC with a little twister on the back. The thing is dynamite, and then Matt's just fishing a moon eye in a tube, but you don't have to take the time always to cork fish stuff. You can cast and wind and catch sunnies and crappies. It's a lot more efficient. If you find an area that's got fish, sure, drop shot or cork fish, but to find the fish, this is definitely the way to do it. You know, last year, you guys did that little bit on uh, oh, top. There we go top water fishing. Another sunny. Not a huge, oh, it's a pumpkin seed. Another one of the great fish in the sunfish family. Not a giant, but still a beautiful fish. Check this guy out. We've got a handful of different sunfish species here in Minnesota. We've got, of course, the bluegill sunfish, the most common, the most popular. We've got the pumpkin seeds. We've got green sunfish. And then, of course, we get a number of hybrids. And a lot of the Big sunfish that you'll see, especially across, you know, central Minnesota, are actually bluegill and pumpkin seed hybrids. And those are the ones that get just huge. I've caught some magnum ones of those, and the pumpkin seeds tend to be pretty aggressive. So if you get around those, this is definitely a sweet deal to do. And the green sunfish are very aggressive too. So a lot of the lakes where we're at in western Minnesota, you know, that Alexandria area, you'll have green sunfish, pumpkin seeds, and bluegills. So little variety pack. There's another one.
There's no place like this. Yes! <laughs> Fishermen are always looking for an edge. Lures, locations, the right equipment. Here's one edge mechanics have been using for decades to help engines run smoother and last longer. It's Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam works to do a few important things exceptionally well. Cleans dirty engine deposits, lubricates critical engine areas, and helps to protect the entire fuel system from harmful fuel residues. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. I that might be a bluegill. I think we got another one here, Matt. Ah, look at this. So much smaller than what we are catching, but notice the coloration on this fish. This one's a hen or a female. See that? You can see the difference in how gray it is. It's, got, it's much paler. You can notice the, um, see the belly on it. It's, got, it's carrying eggs. So believe it or not, if you were gonna harvest a fish, you'd be better off harvesting this fish than you would some of those males that are just even slightly bigger than that. Keeping the big males in the system really dictates the overall size structure of how big the bluegills get in any given lake. And when you look at that fish that Jeremy just caught, when you put that on the table and you get it flayed out, when you compare it to the flay that you get off a big male, it's really not much different than just a little fork full. With technology today, it's amazing what you can fish in. Now, throwing little tiny jigs in big wind, I mean, it's windy, it's white capping right now, is something that you just throw in the towel before this amazing boat technology we've got. But now we can fish in these conditions. I'm standing with both my feet on the ground, the trolling motor's taking care of it, and if we wanted to fish, you know, bow down from the wind, we can tail and down. We've got so many options that make fishing in conditions like this pleasant and enjoyable. And before, you'd either have to throw an anchor out, and every time you wanted to move, take you forever to pick up the anchor move. Now, you want to fish bow into the wind, bow downwind, it's all just a piece of cake. This technology really makes fishing just a lot more fun. There he is. There we big go, I think I got dog. a big crappie. Cool. Oh, that is a bonus. Oh, that's a nice crappie right there, isn't it, huh? That's the fun thing is whether you're crappie fishing, you always get some bonus bluegills, or if you're bluegill fishing, you always get some bonus crappies. And one thing I've got to say about fishing in the spring or that pre-spawn bite, it's dynamite for whatever you're fishing for, whether it's bass or walleyes if you've got open seasons and especially pan fish, you know, hanging out at the bait shops and you go up north or whatever, a lot of times in the spring you hear people say, hey, the pan fish aren't biting yet, they're not in. Well, of course they're not where they're gonna spawn when the water temperatures are cold, but they're still very catchable and they're definitely catchable on little baits like this, power fishing for them. Little plastics, spinner baits like this VMC bait here, it's dynamite, you can catch tons of fish doing it way before the spawn. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, big crappie. Is it a big crop dog? Looks like it. Cool. Got a little crappie nice. hole here. Here she comes. 
Flipping them in with these big long rods is so fun. Takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, nice beautiful crappie. Full of eggs, ready to go. You can tell the female crappies, usually the male ones get really, really dark in color. I think we got a little school of them here, dude. All right. I got a, I got a small sunny. There we go. All right, man, let's go look at something, something different here. You know, spring like this is really, I would say the best time of year to go do recon on where big panfish live. Not only for lakes, because not all lakes have big panfish, but secondly, where in the lake are the fish gonna be at? So we're just gonna fire up the motor, drive around, we'll maybe do a little side imaging, see if we can find some deeper cabbage and hopefully land on some more gills. Be nice to get a break from the wind too. You know, there's something to be said about these small motors. They're just, they're, these new four strokes, they're quiet, they're super, super fuel efficient, but they've also got a lot of zip. I mean, this, this is my dream boat. It's an 1875 One Pro Guide. I can, you know, pan fish and bass fish, and I can troll with it. I can do so many things, it's so versatile. But this 90 horse Merc on the back, I can go relatively fast. I can go almost 40 miles an hour with this boat. I have to fill the gas tank like, twice a year and I fish all the time. It really is just an amazing, amazing motor and an awesome boat if you're a multi-species fisherman. So much of this spring fishing is not, you know, it's, of course your electronics are important, but using your eyes, having good glasses to see in the water is a huge part of it. I mean, we spend a lot of time just driving before we ever fish. Well, these little lakes like this, we'll do a loop around the whole thing before we even start casting and look for the best habitat. Side imaging is another useful tool when you're doing this. You can find, you know, old bluegill colonies, you can see wood, and you can, of course, find cover and a tip to get some of the best detail out of your side imaging is to set your chart speed on the side imaging to roughly the speed that you're going. So you can see here, if I scroll down, my chart speed, I've got it at four. You notice I'm going a little over four miles an hour. That's gonna give me the best picture I can get when I'm looking with side imaging. Oh, oh. There's a few in here, I just got another bite. There he is. Had him that time. Nice big crappie. Oh yeah. Whoever coined the phrase, less is more, wasn't much of a fisherman. He probably talked himself into a V6 when he could have got a V8, settled for 100 horsepower instead of 250, and went home empty-handed when he should have doubled down. Introducing the Solix series. From mega imaging to auto chart live to cross touch, Solix has all of fishing's most innovative technologies on our biggest screen ever. Because more is more. Only from Humminbird. Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to lundboats.com. Yeah, here for Angling Bugs. I'm Tony Roach. Ray Rollstone. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water has been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up-to-date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. Can't get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. There we go. 
What did you get, Jerry? A nice bluegill, I think, buddy. Oh yeah, it is a nice one. Oh yeah, one. nice one. Oh, look at this big yellow-breasted bluegill. Sweet. I'm gonna tail this down here, buddy. Look at the size of that one. That is just a spectacular fish. Hey, you wanna catch big bluegills like this? Try power fishing for them. Set the corks aside, cast and wind, and you're gonna catch some big bluegills and be sure to let these guys go. You know, every day, if at all possible, I read the Bible before I go to work or go do a television fishing show or what, what, whatever, even if I'm in a motel or I'm at home. And uh, uh, some are relatively short, quick reads and a little bit of prayer. Others are rather lengthy given, given time and circumstances. But uh, uh, I get so much out of the Word of God for practical living, practical living. And uh, uh, certain scriptures, and many people can attest to this, really touch my heart like they do uh, other people at certain times that you need to hear something. I want to share with you a scripture that's been near and dear to me for the last oh about two and a half years and it became alive to me it became really real to me and something I did just a little bit different with it. It's Romans 8:28. probably some of you know if you're a regular scripture reader know it. Uh, Romans 8:28 says, says, says and we know that all things work together for good for those that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Now that sounds good, the first part sounds real good. All things work together for good, rah, 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 yeah. For those that love God and are called according to his purpose. This became real, I was dealing with some personal issues with my wife, she went in for a third time for major heart surgery and we were going through some health issues and thank God she's back on track pretty good. And uh, like, like anybody in business, you always get some challenges off and on if, you, if you're in business these days. And we had some issues business-wise that we were dealing with. And the scripture really, really, really became a part. Many times in a day, I would confess it. All things work together for good Lord, and I'd bring it before him. And I even took it a step further that net, and I personalized this. Where the word says, all things work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. You know what I did? I said, all things work together for good for those that love you and are called according to your purpose. And my last sentence, and that's me. I personalized this and it gave me more meaning. And when I get into a lot of, a lot of the word, I personalize it. I take the word he, it was somewhat distant. But when I said you, it's me talking to God. It made a difference. It became more real to me yet. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. You might pick up a pointer on this one or two. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.